The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. Welcome to the O Gladsome Light Podcast. This program contains preaching and teaching from an Orthodox Christian perspective to help you in your walk with Jesus Christ and to be victorious in Him. Well, welcome to the show. It's O Gladsome Light here every Monday at noon on WR4CY, your 24 7 internet radio around the world, with a simultaneous broadcast on K4HD in Hollywood, California. And W4VET. Live call in number is 561 623 9429. That's 561 623 9429. That's a live call in number. We have a Skype address of W4CY Radio, is your Skype address. And of course, if you go into W4CY.com, you can get in the chat room and chat with us here with Chad, the chat box, and me. (laughs) <laughs> I'm the chat box, huh? You're going to help me today. You know that. Why? What's the subject? Today Al? is called John the Ladder, L-A-D-D-E-R. Not John the Baptist, but John the Ladder? We're going to talk about John the Ladder today, All right. a fourth a century. Well, I'm, I'll get to, let me, before I go off on a tangent, uh, in the Orthodox Church, on the fourth Sunday of Lent, we celebrate uh, his, his name, John Climacus. That's John Climacus, and he was also called John the Ladder, L-A-D-D-E-R, because he wrote a beautiful uh, uh, treatise on uh, spiritual, how to ascend into heaven and using spiritual virtue in uh, 30 steps. It's a 30-step program. And this is, uh, uh, let me find out, this is uh, a sixth century. He was, uh, he was, Born 579 and died in 649, called John the Ladder. Uh, He was a monk uh, based at Mount Sinai, St. Catherine's Monastery uh, in uh, Mount Sinai, Egypt. And we know uh, Mount Sinai had quite a bit of activity in the Old Testament, you know. And so uh, what a a wonderful place to be. This is an active monastery today. It's been around for a long, long time, Uh, a walled city. And it's just uh, I've I've watched videos of uh, Mount Sinai, St. Catharines at Mount Sinai. Very beautiful. But before I get into uh, John the Ladder, let's talk about a ladder. First of all, I've got a ladder at the house, and it's only a six footer. But I tell you what, I do not like being on a ladder. I'll get on the first step, and I'll probably, I'll get on the second step. But then as I start to ascend on that ladder, I get kind of worried because uh, you like to have somebody hold a ladder. Chad, do you ever get on a ladder? Yes, sir. I used to uh, pressure clean roofs and use them all the time. Oh, my gosh. So you had like an extension ladder laying against the house or something? I have myself a little giant. Wow. It packs up very nicely and extends very long. And uh, I've been on on roofs before using those kind of extension ladders. And, yeah. And I find it difficult to to come down you got to turn around and back yeah. down the stairs you know trust your feet trust you gotta, your you gotta, where you are am i going to hit the the you know the tread cor- correctly or am i just going to do like chevy chase did in christmas vacation <laughs> and down. fall in the bushes you know well i actually came down nicely on his extended ladder he looked around <laughs> make sure no one was looking but he came down nicely yeah he did yeah <laughs> Until yeah, the higher up, the higher up you are, the harder you fall. So that's uh, yeah. why you're a little uh, bit, you know. I, I, you know, on the ladder, there's uh, you know the rungs. They call them the steps, the rungs. You know, yeah, as they go to up, lock it. And and as you go up, the the I, I, I find myself really gripping the sides uh, tightly as I higher I go. <laughs> Make sure you don't move them. You don't want to, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, I don't fly too good. <laughs> I, I what I can do is I can prove that gravity exists by you know falling in the bushes or on the concrete or on the dirt or whatever right. so i prefer not to be on a ladder but there was a man 
that I'm talking about today, John the Ladder, that wrote a beautiful paper on uh, how to tame the virtues or get the virtues in line with God and make your ascent into heaven. Now, let me preface this whole show about this. It's not about works, all right? It's about faith in Jesus Christ. But what our job is, because you remember uh, St. Athanasius told us, uh, God became man, okay? Jesus became man, so we could become God, not God's, you know, not, not, a, not the supreme God, but as God, okay? You understand, we don't share his essence. You know, God is, is, uh, is God, and all we are is to be, let's say, we're supposed to, you know, you ever go to rodeo? And, and they take that lasso and they, they grab that, you know, they, they rope that calf roping, you know. And that's what we're supposed to do with our passions is rope them in and uh, don't let them uh, run wild. And, and I'll have some quotes later on in the show about what uh, John, the latter, uh, said. But I'll give you a little history on John right now. Uh, <clears throat> John went to Sinai, as I said, and he was 16 years old. Now, when I was 16, I, I didn't think about going into a monastic community. I thought about chasing girls and hot cars and, you know, all the stuff that a, that an American boy would, a normal American boy would do. I mean, what about you, Chad? When you were 16, what were you thinking about? That's about the same thing. <laughs> uh, when can I leave home? Where are the car keys? I'm my own independent person. <laughs> I need gas. I know I nothing, gas but money. I think I know everything. <laughs> but, you, you know, it's interesting you say that because the older I got, the more I realized my grandparents and parents were very smart. I thought they were the dumb as a box of rocks when I was 16 years old. It's amazing. It's just amazing, you know. And so when you have children and, and they turn 16, then you say, Lord, you do have a sense of humor because now i got to deal with a 16-year-old. When I was a 16-year-old, I put my mom, you know, my mom, my dad passed away when I was 12. And so my mom raised two boys, you know, up through uh, release, you know, into the world. Uh, big job. I don't. Re I didn't realize how big of a job it was for mom to uh, train up a couple boys and turn them loose into society, but uh, she did it. She did it all by herself. She wouldn't get remarried uh, until after uh, the my brother and I were gone, and then uh, well, my brother hung out. You know, he stayed with mom for you know his whole life, but I, I left the nest, and then mom was very cautious about bring another man into into her life because uh, she, you know, like a mother hen, she wanted to guard her children. And, and most kids are uncomfortable of a new man coming in and replacing their father. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, right, right on. But now at 16 years old that uh, uh, John Climacus, uh, you know, he, he submitted to a, uh, a monk, uh, an abbot, and, uh, and a guide, and for four years uh, – after four years, St. John was tonsured as a monk. And then, uh, it's interesting, Abba uh, Strategios, who was present at St. John's tonsure, that's when they get the haircut, you know, and they make their vows as to being a monk, uh, predicted that he would become a great luminary in the Church of Christ. So he had a, maybe a vision or a, a word from the Lord about uh, John's uh, future life. So for 19 years, John progressed in monasticism in obedience to his spiritual father. And that's part of your monastic walk is uh, you're obedient and you have to produce uh, the virtue of humility, you know. And I, I don't know about today in our, in our world, if you took somebody, in, uh, a worldly person, and tossed them into a monastery, their, their head would probably explode because that's such a, a contrary lifestyle to what we – we do here, you know, in the, in the USA. Now, after the death of Abba Mar Marty Rios, St. John embarked on the solitary life, settling in a wild place called uh, Thoia, where he spent 40 years laboring in silence, fasting, prayer, and tears of repent of penitence. So that's, that, that's basically the monk's uh, uh, marching orders, is to, you know, be silent, fast, Pray without ceasing, and uh, and tears of penitence. You know, uh, all of us have missed a mark and fallen short of the glory of God. And and some some men or women are even more sensitive to that uh, than others. 
And John was very sensitive to where he was as a, as a, I guess you could say as a, as a worldly person and realizing how far he was from God. Now, it is not, a, not by chance that, uh, that in the latter, John speaks about tears of repentance. Now, he says one of these quotes, just as a fire burns and destroys the wood, so pure tears, those are pure tears, wash away every impurity, both external and internal. His holy prayer was strong and, and you know, and very strong and substance, had substance. And as may be seen from an example from the God-pleasing saint, just looking at his life. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story about uh, John and, and his disciple named Moses. Not the Moses of the Old Testament, but, you know, as, as uh, you know, we're talking, uh, you know, sixth century saint here, so it's not the Moses of the Old Testament. There's many Moseses in, uh, you know, in, in the Church of Christ, people named Moses. But once the saint ordered his disciple Moses to bring dung to fertilize the vegetable garden at the monastery, and when he had fulfilled the, the obedience, Moses laid down to rest under the shade of a large rock because of the scorching heat of the summer. St. John was in his cell, which is a place where they uh, sleep and pray, uh, when, they're, when they're not in community in church, they're in their own little uh, room called a cell. He was in a light sleep, and suddenly a man of remarkable appearance uh, came to him and awakened the holy ascetic, uh, reproaching him, saying, John, why do you sleep so heedlessly when Moses is in danger? So St. John immediately woke up and began to pray for his disciple. When Moses returned in the evening, St. John asked whether any sort of misfortune had befallen him. The monk replied, a large rock would have fallen on me as I slept beneath it at noon, but I left that place because I thought I heard you calling me. St. John did not tell his disciple of his vision, but gave thanks to God. So you see, uh, it's a miracle right there that uh, they were so in tune, and, and God, you know, maybe an angel appeared to St. John to, to pray for his disciple, which he did faithfully. And by that, Moses uh, heard, it, heard John, you know, calling him, and he, and he moved. Now, St. John ate the food which is permitted by the monastic rule, but only in moderation. He did not sleep very much, only enough to keep up his strength so that he would not ruin his mind by unceasing vigil. I do not fast excessively, he said of himself, nor do I give myself over to intense all-night vigil, nor lay upon the ground, but I restrain myself, and, and soon the Lord saved me. Interesting, uh, the lifestyle of, of a monk that... Uh, is totally sold out to to the Lord. Is uh, uh, they don't care about the world. Uh, they've uh, that's why they went into the monastery. They they turned their back on the world. And what they want to do is they want to fast. They want to pray. They want to seek God's face and in, in obedience. And uh, because when he, when it, in the end result, where do you want to end up? You know, you got. We, I've, I've done enough radio shows to let you know that you're either going to be in heaven or hell. And uh, what you need to do is go look at some of these previous radio shows and, and look at the subject title, topic of the, you know, the show topic title to uh, maybe interest you in, in listening to uh, one of my past shows, which is on YouTube and uh, which is on iHeartRadio. And if you can't listen live Today, you can always pick it up tomorrow on iHeart because it's archived, or you can even go to YouTube, and all those links are on my webpage, ogladsomelight.org, ogladsomelight. That's O, not O-H, but it's ogladsomelight.org. So, so at the request of the uh, Hugemen at the monastery, who's like the, the boss, uh, asked because he saw the spiritual asceticism of John, asked him to write uh, a book and of instructions for monks that wished to attain spiritual perfection. Knowing of the wisdom of spiritual gifts of St. John of Sinai, the Hugemen requested him to write down whatever was necessary for the salvation of those in a monastic life, which is a very admirable thing. 
such a book would be a, a ladder fixed on earth. Now, think about this, Chad. Genesis chapter 28. Did not Jacob have a dream about a ladder? He did. And it went, it went it started on earth, went to heaven, and he saw the angels up and going up and down the ladder. Did he see multiple levels or a certain level? Was no, it he described? saw he saw uh, he he saw different levels. You know, this ladder had rungs on it, right. and and he uh, he saw that, and and he, even the Lord talked to him. You know, right. there was a conversation uh, in the dream. Jacob's that, ladder. Exactly, Jacob's ladder. So you see, maybe uh, Saint John got his idea from uh, you know, reading. Genesis chapter 28, and, and specifically verse 12, of uh, maybe writing these spiritual virtues in a sequence like the ladder that Jacob had saw in a vision. Now, John, St. John felt that such a task was beyond his ability. That shows his humility right there. I, you ever see, wow, that's just too much. I can't do that. I mean, it's just too much. You know, you ever get start a project and you look at the whole project and say, this is impossible. But, uh, you know, as I, I always say like a pizza. Do you eat the whole pizza at once or just a piece at a time, you know? So don't look at the whole thing. Just look at it a piece at a time. And it, it, maybe it's not so overwhelming to you. So he called uh, this, this work he did uh, the ladder. 30 steps of sp spiritual perfection correspond to the 30 years of the Lord's age. You know, remember when he was baptized? Remember when the Lord was baptized, 30 years of age, you know? Uh, St. John, the baptizer, you know, was there, and, and the Lord came to the water, the Jordan waters, and, uh, and uh, he was baptized in obedience by John. And that's when we see about the, the Father speaking and the Holy Spirit uh, lighting on him as a dove, you know? And then he basically at that point, that's when the, when the Lord came out, you know, uh, he was a, a obedient uh, son, you know. Uh, work, worked, uh, uh, you know, for his family. Uh, you know, Joseph, being a carpenter, worked probably was a carpenter. And uh, he, but there's something about. Remember, he he grew in wisdom and stature. Isn't that is that something? And as the Lord, now remember, that's the Son of God. That's God on earth, but looked like a man. And that's a mystery. And that's an article of our faith that Jesus was incarnated. He took his flesh from a woman, okay? Can you imagine if God walked, remember when uh, Moses wanted to see God and he couldn't? Because God says, uh, tell you what, uh, I'm going to put you in that cleft of that rock and I'm going to put my hand over you. I'm going to walk by. And all you can see is my hind end, you know what I mean? And uh, if, if you see me face to face, you'll die. So he has seen God, just not his face. Right. All right. And why, why do you think Moses glowed so much he had to wear a veil? Because he was in the presence of God Isn't for so that, long. Now, could we do that? Could we be in the presence of God or glow? Could we glow? Uh, no. Why Unless not? you stick your finger in a, in a light socket or something, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But let me say that if you follow, if you uh, surrender, totally surrender to the Lord in your whole life and uh, and you know, be available to do His will and spend time in prayer and fasting, and as we're as the Orthodox Church is doing right now, because this is the fourth Sunday of Lent was yesterday, so the church is in the great fast that leads up to the celebration of the resurrection of Christ. But can you imagine that? Uh, look at Satan, Sarah from Aserov. He had such a relationship, close relationship with the Lord, that this guy that was interviewing him couldn't look him in the eye. Really? Because his, his eyes were so brilliant, the flame was in his eyes. Mm. Just like they're talking about Revelation, when the Lord come back, the flame of fire. Yeah. The Saint Seraphim of Serov, he had that. And Ma, uh, Montalilov, who was interviewing him, couldn't look at him. He had to look away because it's so bright and so brilliant. It's like driving, okay, you're driving your car, right? And, you're, and the sun is going down, and you're driving west. And you just can't see. You can't see traffic lights because the sun is so brilliant that it, it you know, you sure. really got to be careful when you're driving west in the sunset. And uh, you know, thank God we have these uh, visors that flip down and sunglasses kind of help somewhat. Yeah. But I'm telling you, when you when you're in the in, in the woods in the Russian woods and and uh, all Saint Seraphim, there was pray and fast and seek the Lord. 
And he had, because one of the things that he said, the most important thing for us to do is acquire the Holy Spirit. Because can you do anything without the Holy Spirit? I mean, we are the temple of God, and it would be all neat and have it all swept and clean and pretty. But uh, just like the tabernacle of Moses, what Ezekiel saw, the Spirit of God depart, it was dark. Okay? And that's like us. You know, uh, we even say in the Psalms, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. The Lord, please keep that, that, that presence of God in our lives. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Please fill our temple with the presence, the Holy Spirit's presence. Because with the, did not the Lord say, with me all things are possible, and without me, this with men, things are impossible. Just like I said at the beginning of the radio show, you look at the whole project and your mind will explode. But if you look at it a piece at a time, then it's, it's uh, palatable, I guess you could say. Mm. You know. <laughs> but, you know, this, this book was written, uh, you know, the, the, the latter was written for monks, but also it doesn't only apply to monks because some people have said, well, you know, monks pray all day and and uh, we're, we're in the world, and we don't have time for all of that. But I, I see Scripture that says pray without ceasing. Pa- Did not Paul say pray without ceasing? Yeah. So you better be praying without ceasing. You know, every time, Chad, every time you see me, I should be praying without ceasing. Yeah. I mean, that's why the church has come up with this beautiful prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me as a sinner. You can say that all day long. It's called the Jesus Prayer. And that is a, a confession that you make to the Lord. Think about it. And praying can be thanking God, like thank you, God, for this job, and thank you for keeping me healthy through this day, and for yeah. the food, yeah, and the air, and yeah. You know. I mean, thank, thank, thankful for anything, even calamity that comes in life. You're supposed sure. to be thankful for that, and that's hard. It's teaching you a lesson. You just don't know. It. You think it's hard times, but it's actually a good lesson that will, you know, transform you to the next level on the ladder i mean that exactly boy you are right on right? i mean our plan you know is just a straight line god's plan has you know cliffs and drops and valleys and peaks and stuff like that you ever been on a roller coaster i just got off one a couple of days ago i hate them you don't like them oh i love them you like that that thrill of the yeah, roller coaster i huh? know it's locked in we're safe for the most part you know you don't have a lot of up, casualties down, oh it's good stuff upside down get my blood you know turn me upside down shake me up good <laughs> It's healthy. <laughs> well, let me tell you, there's, there, I, I, I've told this story before, and I think it's worth telling again. Is uh, There's a movie that Steve Martin was in called Parenthood. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, uh, you know, uh, the, Steve Martin and his wife were hacking about, you know, raising the children. And, and it found out, they got down to the brass tacks, the, ma, the grandma was sitting there saying, well, life is like a roller coaster. They we're talking about it right now, Chad. Yeah. And life is like a roller coaster. Some people like roller coasters and some don't, you know, because who would ride a flat roller coaster from here? Get on, Boring, and get off. Right? Boring. Now, but some people like order in their life and no surprises and all that, uh, all that dynamics that go into raising children and life yeah. in general, you know. So the grandma's talking about, you know, uh, how – Life is like a roller coaster, and so Steve Martin and his wife go to a, their kids' a play. <laughs> oh. Okay, so they go to the play, and the little girl's on the stage, and uh, things don't go right, and and the camera pans over to Steve Martin and his wife, and he's like all worried that his wife, his daughter's going to screw it up, but then the mom is laughing and rejoicing in the fact that her child is involved, and all, and all you hear in the background is a tink, 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 tink as a roller coaster oh. car is going up, up to the top, right, and then it hits the peak and it goes, <laughs> and and so Steve Martin doesn't like roller coaster, but uh, the mom she she loved it, you know, yeah. So she enjoyed life. So I thought that was a very good analogy, good metaphor there, yeah. Yeah, I like that very much. Now let me uh, Saint John, of course, had many sayings, okay, uh, quotes, and I want to quote a few of them here to you as we go. Now think about, as I say these, a vain person. Now, do we do we know of any vain people? Not me. <laughs> Myself. A vain person seems to honor God, seems to honor God, but strives to please men rather than God. Do you know of anybody like that? We all can be in that trap. Yeah, you can check us all on that one. We, we can look at that and say, oh, Lord have mercy. Lord yeah. have mercy. 
Another, uh, another one, people of lofty spirit bear insult placidly and willingly, but only the holy and righteous may hear praise without harm. Now think about that. Remember, I told a story about this one bishop saw this this prostitute who was beautiful. She was in a in a in a parade, and all the monks were standing there. And they saw that they knew what she was. But the the bishop said, "Boy, she is so beautiful," and and they were horrified. The monks were horrified that he would comment on her beauty, and he wasn't lusting after her. He was just that was a creation of God, and yes, she was on the wrong path. But he was just commenting on her beauty. Yeah. It was so striking. And then he says to the monks, he says, uh, God created her. And and as she was passing by and the parade, she could hear what they were saying. And he, he corrected the monks saying, he says, because you have lust in your heart, you, you are afraid to look that way. Because remember, it says in Scripture, if you look on a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed sin. But he was not lusting after her. He was just glorifying God of her, of her beauty because God created her. And just telling the truth. And so uh, the monks were slain, and they were, their hearts were pricked. And even the woman heard that, and she converted, and she repented, and she became a Christian because of that right there. Hmm. Very interesting story. Good story. When you hear that your neighbor or friend has slandered you behind your back, and we know that happens, or even to your face, the scriptures tell us we're supposed to praise and love him. Now, you cannot do that without the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, being in charge and not you being in charge. It is not the one who reproaches himself who shows humility, for who will not put up with himself? It is the one who is slandered by another, yet continues to show love for him. And that's what that's called heaping those coals, those hot coals upon his head. But you're doing it not to heap the coals. You're doing it because you love God, and God says, you say you love me, but you hate your brother? Excuse me. How does that work? Not very good. Whoever is proud of his natural gifts, intelligence, learning, skill in reading, clear enunciation and other simil uh, similar qualities which are acquired without much labor will never obtain supernatural gifts. Whoever is not faithful in small things, that's Luke 16, 10, is also unfaithful in large things, and he talks about being vainglorious. Vainglorious. Vainglory. Wow. There's a lot of that going on. Now, let me get a little background, a little structure and purpose to the, to the latter. The aim of the treatise, uh, treatise is to be a guide for practicing a life of completely and wholly devoted to God. Now, what is wrong with that? What, nothing is wrong with that. Wholly devoted to God. We all should be that way. The latter metaphor, not dissimilar to the vision that the patriarch Jacob received, is used to describe how one may ascend into heaven by first renouncing the world. Did not he say, you can't love? Love not the world or the things in it, for if you do, the love of the Father is not in you. Bam. Thank you, Chad. I, it's so wonderful that we can do this show together. I got you. Yeah, I love it. There are 30 chapters. Each covers a, a particular vice or virtue. They were originally called uh, loi, but in the present day, they were referred to the steps. The sayings are not much so much rules and regulations as with the law that St. Moses received the Sinai, but rather observations about what is being practiced. Metaphorically, language is employed frequently to better illustrate the nature of, of the virtue or the vice. Overall, the treatise does follow a progression that transitions from start, the renunciation of the world is the first step, to a finish, which is love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the, okay, you get a lot. Let me. I'm not going to read all 30 steps. I'm going to. I broke them into uh, categories. Like uh, the first uh, three steps are the break with the world, renunciation, detachment. Okay, get it. You know, understand that to love the world is to hate God, as you said. Now we have fundamental virtues: obedience, true repentance. Uh, remembrance of death because well, why not why not remember that because we're you know some monks actually sleep in their coffins 
They sleep there because they know that their body is temporary. Of joy making in the morning, and I'm going to add this, before your cup of coffee. Can you have the joy of the Lord in the morning before you have your coffee? <laughs> well, I don't drink coffee. Well, are you joyful in the morning? When you first wake up and give God glory for letting you, uh, uh, be, he gave you another day of life to be on this earth to do his will. Freedom from anger. Isn't that a, it's, those are this fundamental virtues. And then he goes on talks about spiritual passions, a remembrance of wrongs and malice. Don't remember that stuff. Did not to say that the Lord says, I am the avenger of evil, not you. And when you take when you take in charge, I'm going to revenge that, God has to back off. He can't do his work because you have chosen to be God in that situation. Yeah, it's up to us. He talks about physical passions on that clamorous mistress, the stomach. Are we <laughs> during during the great the fast, we're supposed to uh, find out who's in charge. Our spirit or our gut? <laughs> What's in charge? But I like that cheesecake over there. Well, you can't have it. Love of money. Was not the root of all evil, the love of money. Money yeah. is not, not bad. TV is not bad. Nothing's bad except if you love something like money, then it becomes bad. On non-possessiveness. Think about that, a non-possessiveness. Who's supposed to possess you? The Lord. You're supposed to let the Lord possess you. Lock, stock, and barrels, they say, you know. On sleep and prayer and singing the Psalms with the brotherhood and how to practice it. I mean, that's in a monk setting. But you can do that, too, uh, about sleeping and prayer and, and reading the Psalms. There's talks about uh, vain glory. I talked about that a moment, about meekness, simplicity, guileliness. You remember the Lord said, and there's a man who's, no guile was found in him. You know, that's the guy commented about the Lord. There's a man uh, that was no guile in his mouth. Isn't that amazing? So you think about when John was writing the latter, did he have the personality and the actions of Jesus Christ in his mind as he walked uh, through, the, through his creation? You know, before he went to the cross. I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Union with God, about stillness of the body and soul. Uh, it comes back to the unholy and blessed prayer uh, concerning heaven and earth, concerning the linking together of the Supreme Trinity among the virtues. I mean, if you ever have a chance to read the 30 steps in the ladder, I, I would go do that. Uh, you know, it's an amazing journey to look at the 30 steps that St. John had wrote, ha has written down in, in this uh, article called The Ladder. Like no other ascetical and spiritual text, this one should be read carefully. Since the original audience were those of practicing the monastic life, the language is very strong when contrasting the life of the world, and it should be. You know, uh, the world is going one way. Uh, I remember I said this, Chad, I said uh, there's a stairway to heaven and there's a highway of to hell. Isn't there, ra radio, uh, isn't there songs like that? Two songs, yeah. What was that? Who wrote that? Uh, highway to heaven was – or. Uh, Stairway, Stairway to Heaven was Led Zeppelin, and Highway to Hell was ACDC. Interesting, huh? Both rock bands. So, so uh, a Stairway to Heaven looks like it's a, a kind of a slow process, but a Highway to Hell is pretty fast, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>, a quick slope. <laughs> so, uh, and they recommend that you have a spiritual father, a spiritual guide, uh, you know, uh, to take you if you go through this to. You know, don't go off the deep end, but, uh, you know, this all has to be carefully, um, you know, guidance of a spiritual father. You can't, you know, you say, well, my father's in heaven. Well, then you don't dis discount Paul when he says, I am your father, your spiritual father. You know, when you were talking about it in the epistles. And I'm not here to defend that, but I'm just making a point of that. Here's some more quotes from John Climacus. The angel fell from heaven without other passion except pride remember i will ascend i i i sounds like lucifer that's it and he took 30 percent with him didn't he 
took one third of the angels. They fell with him, and so so we may ask whether is it is possible to ascend heaven by humility alone, without any other virtues. Humility is a constant forgetfulness of one's achievements, and that seems like all we want to do is remember our achievements. Is that and that's called being dead to self and alive to God. And so when people listen to the show, they're going to say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, then you, you, that's where we have to do the self-examination of where you're at <laughs> with God in, in, in the road, in the roadway of going from here to, to heaven because it is a journey. And in the Orthodox Church, we, we call it a theosis, a, the process of God having his way with you and you saying amen to that, not my will but thy will be done and make you – Make you like his son. Well, I can't. I'm a sinful man. Amen to that. So am I. We all missed a mark. But it doesn't have to stop there. Just as the winds whip up the sea, so does anger stir confusion in the mind. Think about that when you're angry. You just like, all you can see is that. You know, you just, everything closes in. So we've got to be careful about anger. Those who submit to the Lord with a simple heart will run the good race. Then Paul talked about that, didn't he? Running the good race. If they keep their minds on a leash, they will not draw wickedness of the demons onto themselves. So you think about that. We have a leash law here in, in Palm Beach County. And so the dog has to be on a leash. And that's for the protection of other dogs, but it also protects that dog. And, and, the, and the owner... Let's say it's the, let's say the master, the God, has got you on a leash. Is that good or bad? God's got you on a leash is a good thing. That's a good thing because you know, remember the Old Testament had the law, and the law wasn't say, well, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do it. It was a form of protection to the people of Israel. So I, I even seen parents with their children on a on like a, 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 a string or leash. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking, is that good or bad? Well, that's protecting that child. That we may say um, doesn't look right, and I don't know. I, I'm not going to say yay or nay to that, but I'm looking at that saying, well, that kid can't wander off and get hurt or get lost or get abducted or get abducted, and he is tied. And look at the leash. If they are tied to the parent, they are tied to the master. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, we let them out a little bit, and they get a little naughty. We reel them back in. They reel them back in. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. And that's called, that's as we, we all, when we're born, we can't walk or run. We can crawl, but then we slowly get up on our feet, and we fall down a lot. So you, even our process of fit, walking physically takes time, and it takes time for us to, you know, grow spiritually because when you're, you know, in the beginning, you're spiritually dead. Because of the, you know, ancient sin of Adam and Eve. But you don't have to stay that way. There's hope. Now, there's a tough one. Forgetting offenses is a sign of sincere repentance. And and I, I know people that won't forget. You've done me wrong, and I don't say trust them. But be a, you know, you've heard them say that, uh, fool me once. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You've heard that one. Yeah. And then Bush said, we won't get he, fooled he, again. He messed it all up. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't, <laughs> we know about that one there. <laughs> but uh, forgetting offenses is a sign of sincere repentance. If you keep the memory of them, you may believe you have repented, but you are like someone running in his sleep. Who can do that? Let no one consider it a minor detail. A defect, this darkness that often clouds the eyes even of spiritual people. So you, one of the major things in the latter is forgetting offenses, letting God be the avenger of evil. And that's hard to do. I mean, no matter what happens. And, it, and you know, I, I don't want to sound like uh, I'm minimizing people who, who have been offended, but it depends on, on how tight you are the leash is to God, to the master. Does, doesn't the master know what you need before you even ask for it? I mean, does a dog have to say, it's time for me, you got to feed me now? No. Uh, 
the the per the, the person who has the dog or the cat well the cat we can't count them because they they, they eat when they want anyway but the uh, dogs i've had dogs in my family my whole life and we always fed them at a certain time that was part of the responsibility of owning a pet and take them out and walk them and, and bathroom and all that stuff that's that's part of the job so the leash I want God to have a leash on me. It does not the spirit of uh, want us to, you know, the spirit is such a gentleman that he will not invade your life unless you ask him, and he'll depart as soon as you don't want him around. You know, I've told the story about driving down the, st uh, the street, and J Jesus is out there with his thumb, and you would stop and pick him up, and instead of him getting in the passenger seat, he would move around, he'd come around to the driver's side, open the door, says slide over, and get in and drive the car and turn around and go the other way. And and either you, if you don't want to go that way, then he'll get out of the car. You know, grieving the Holy Spirit. How easy is that to do? We can grieve the Holy Spirit just like that. Ascend, my brothers, and ascend eagerly. Let your hearts resolve be to climb. Listen to the voice of the one who says, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of our God. That's Isaiah 2, 3. Who make our feet to be like the feet of the deer, who sets us on high places that we may be triumphant on his road. Habakkuk 3, 9. Have we ever read that book, the minor prophet Habakkuk? Because we know when he get to heaven, he may come up, Hey, my name is Habakkuk. What'd you think what I wrote? They go, well, gee, I don't think I ever read your book. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> we need to read the scriptures, you know what I mean? We got to get our head in the in the word of God. Run, I beg you, run with him who said, let us hurry until we all arrive at the unity of the faith and the knowledge of God at the mature manhood, at the measure of the stature of Christ's fullness. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. That's not Old Testament, that's New Testament. That was Paul wrote that to the church of Ephesus. Baptized in the 30th year of his earthly age, Christ attained the 30th step of the spiritual ladder. Now, this is going to be good. For God indeed is love, and to be and him be praise, dominion, and power. In him is the cause, past and present and future, of all that is good forever and ever. Amen. You think about it, that Jesus was now the latter wasn't written when Jesus was on the earth, it was written later on. But you know what? Here's Saint uh, Saint John writing the latter, and you know that the Lord started the he have denunciation of the world? Yes. Is God love? Yes. So the Lord was able to run the whole ladder because he's the Lord. Spiritual ladder. A reference to Luke 2.52. 2, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and men. St. Cyril of Alexandria explains that while Christ in divinity had no need to attain virtue, but in his humanity he had to develop just like any other human being. The difference, of course, was he was sinless and he didn't have a sinful nature. So, you know, what about that? When in the, in the wilderness, think about this. Let's do a little sp spiritual gymnastics here. When the, when the Holy Spirit led the Lord into the wilderness and he was 40 days and the devil tempted him, could he have fallen? Because he's God and man. I'm not trying to take away from, you know, the, you know, Jesus Christ being the God man. But this is something to think about. He didn't. He did not, because of you know, of being a sinless, he had no sinful nature, and it's and totally. You think Jesus was totally sold out to heaven? He came from heaven. He came here on a mission to bring us back to the Father because of that ancestral sin of Adam and Eve, that break. And as soon as that break happened, that's when the Lord told the Father, I'll go, and I'll be the bridge builder. I will repair the damage that Satan has done to mankind. And it, you know, it's been going on and on and on, and then all this... Why do we have the flood? Why was it a flood? Think about that. Why did God flood the earth? Only eight people made it out. Wickedness. 
He said, man, he said, I, I actually repent from creating mankind because they're wicked. And he killed them all. He drowned them all, except for eight. Why did, why did he save eight? Because they were found righteous. And what is righteousness? Doing what God says, believing what God says, and just go do it. Why, did, why was Abram, before he became Abraham, why was Abram uh, righteous? Obedience. God says, go, move out of here, and move down, down the line. And you do it. And he did it. And they were saying, where are you going, Abram? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Everybody, everybody's got a destination, right? A target destination. Boy, Abram didn't. He said, but God's going to show me where to, where to settle. Really? Looney? And they'd still do that this day. They'd still look at you, Looney. Yeah. Anytime. And what is the media doing now? Mike Pence, our VP. God talks to him. Do, 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 do. They, you know, that, now Christianity is under attack by the media on, on TV. I don't, I'm not going to get political here, Let's but rejoice, I'm saying. Rejoice then. <laughs> re, yes, rejoice. Exactly. That's because you know what? There's the sheep and the goats and the wheat and the tares and the five foolish virgins and the five wise virgins. And that's in Matthew 25. We see that, that division. And, you, and uh, you know, we, because we're Christians. We're followers of Christ. We're actually supposed to forgive and pray for those folks. Can you imagine? Can we do that? Can we? And that's and that's applying the spiritual ladder right here of of of, of the ascent into heaven is being like Christ. And that's all this ladder is is being like the Lord. And this and Saint John just helps us kind of like puts our head around it, understanding he broke it into those steps to. Say, okay, if you want to be like the Lord, which pleases the Father, well, then get on the ladder and start moving up the ladder, not as you're working your way into heaven. I said that at the beginning of the show. It's about, you know, we have spiritual gifts. We are created for good things, to do good things. And we don't do good things to make it into heaven. God has made us a certain way and he's placed the Holy Spirit within us, and our nature, our new nature, is to do good things, but not for to get into heaven, but in but to be pleasing to the Father. Because you know, I don't have to put. He doesn't have to put a whip in my back. Well, maybe sometimes with the Holy Spirit, if I if I don't move out like I'm supposed to, then I'll get. You know, there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. You know, the devil does his work on the five senses and condemnation. It's all external. But the Holy Spirit works some conviction from the inside out. It's an inside job. You know, so the Holy Spirit brings conviction, and then it moves out, and, and next thing you know, whatever we're doing with our hands or feet or whatever, uh, if we're or, or energized by the Holy Spirit, then that's those are those good fruits we're bringing forth, you know, uh, unto God. And not because, remember, the sheep said, well, when did we do this? And when did we do that? When the, when the goat said, well, we did all these things, and you owe us this. And the sheep said, we were just doing a good thing because that's how you created us, to, be, you know, to please you, Father. You know, so you can, you can you know, be, read that, sheep and the goats. Read what, what the Lord has to do with the goats. Guess where they go? Hi! <laughs> <laughs> Depart from me, for I never knew you. Yeah. And then the sheep saying, enter into the rest which has been created and provided for you. Stairway to heaven. Because you have the right stuff. you got the right stuff. I want to close the show with this. Uh, I got this from my daughter and uh, uh, last night. And it made me cry. And I hope I can get through to read this without doing that. But it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Death, what a wonderful way to explain it. A sick man turned to his doctor and he was preparing to leave the examination room, and he said, Doctor, I'm afraid to die. Tell me what lies on the other side. Very quietly, the doctor said, I do not know. You don't know. You're a Christian man, and you don't know what's on the other side. The doctor was holding the handle of the door. On the other side came a sound of scratching and whining. As he opened the door, the dog sprang into the room and leaped on him with eager show of gladness. Turning to the patient, the doctor said, 
Did you notice my dog? He's never been in this room before. He didn't know what was inside. He knew nothing except the master was here. And when the door opened, he sprang in without fear. I know little of what is on the other side of death, but I do know one thing. I know my master is there, and that is enough. In the name of the Father, and of Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening to the Ogladsome Light Podcast. We hope this program has encouraged you to fight the good fight of faith and walk in the accordance with the commandments of our Lord. May God bless you on your journey to salvation.